finding solutions of polynomials are difficult. Well, linear polynomials we learn to do, quadratic polynomials we learn to factor or use a quadratic formula, but as the degree gets higher, creeps up to a third degree and a fourth degree, we're starting to see it can be a little difficult. In fact, once you find a solution of something like that, it's something you want to hold on to for your life. 500 years ago, Tartaglio was a person that found a root, a solution, or a zero, to a third degree polynomial. And here is his formula that he was able to derive. Now, Tartaglio himself, he was poor and impoverished, and yet he still had the wherewithal and the insight to develop something phenomenal in that time period. Well, as you would think, and like it doesn't happen today, somebody comes in and kind of sideswipes them. A guy named Cardano looks at that and goes, wow, that's incredible. You know what? I'm going to help you get ahead in life. I'm going to try to find you a patron and let me use this formula that you have. A few years later, Tartaglia discovers that Cardano published that work as his own in his Ars Magna, a famous work at the time. And then a few years later, he got his famous or one of his famous students, Ferrari, to accuse uh, Tartaglia of plagiarism. Wait a minute, that stinks because it was the other way around. But that's how it worked out. And things got very heated. And Tartaglia fortunately was able to escape with his life. But that's all he was able to escape with. Today, well, and then 300 years after that, this whole controversy, this whole you stole my formula type of thing, we can kind of put to rest because we've discovered, and Galois was one of the first people, or was the first person to let us know that we can't find a root, or there's no general formula to find a root of a fifth degree equation or higher. But there's our methods, and that's what our goal is over this series of, of sessions, is to look at complicated polynomial functions of degrees higher than three, and try to discover, can we find their solutions? Where do we look for their solutions? What do their solutions look like? So we're gonna be building some skills so that we can do that and we don't have to rely on stealing somebody else's work, cheating them out of their life's work in any type of way. We're gonna be able to build the skills so we can claim this is what we've done. Now, as I mentioned, we're gonna be looking all over to try to figure out where do we find roots at. So let me help kind of back us up a little bit and understand where have the roots come from? Where are the ones we've discovered so far? So let's take, for example, um, a function that I've already factored out into factored terms. And remember, each factor produces a zero. And so x plus three produces a negative three. Two x minus one produces a one half. X plus root two, x minus root two, produces plus or minus root two. And then x minus four plus four, five i, and so forth produces those particular roots. Again, this is just an example, but what I want to show you is the kind of roots that we've been able to find and the kind of roots that we're going to be able to expect as we try to solve some of these extended polynomials. We're going to find rational roots. We're going to see irrational roots. We're going to find roots that are complex imaginary roots, where these zeros are either real or non-real. So out of all the numbers in the complex plane, we're going to try to develop some strategies to narrow that search down to find out what are the solutions to these particularly complicated polynomial expressions and polynomial functions. And the cool thing is that we're going to be able to do it. We're going to develop the tools and we're going to be able to understand those tools so that we can do it ourselves. That's kind of cool.